Good afternoon, radio audience, and again, as always, I want to thank you all so much for tuning in to the Unadulterated Truth Broadcast, a broadcast that is a live Bible question and answer program with you, the radio audience. At any point in time, you may pick up your phone, dial the number 281-837-2222 if you have any Bible questions, comments you'd like to make, and we would love to give you book, chapter, verse, all of your Bible questions, and listen to any reasonable comments you all like to make as well. Titus chapter 2, we're going to look at a letter uh, inspired by the Holy Spirit through Paul to Titus, and we're going to use for a subject this afternoon, grace is designed to teach us. Amen. Grace is designed Amen. to teach us. And we're going to pick up in Titus chapter 2, and I'm going to read verse number 11, and we'll read down, and we'll read down uh, to verse number 14, where the Bible reads as follows, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation had appeared unto all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Paul says, these things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority he says, let no man despise thee. Amen. Grace is designed to teach us. You know, when you understand this text, Paul is writing to Titus, a man that he had actually left on an island called Crete, uh, to teach the saints who have obeyed the gospel how to live godly uh, in a perverted society, uh, a society that uh, was full of false teachers, and a false way of living, a, a society, an island of people that had disregard and disdain for the things of God. You go back to Titus chapter 1, and we look at verse number 10, Paul will describe to Titus uh, some of the people that he would have gone have to deal with on this isle of Crete. He says, for there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. So you had some Jews that were on the island that were teaching false doctrine, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, now this is sad, the Cretan are always liars, evil beasts, and slow bed. Now, you know it's bad when some of your own say it's bad. Yes. And so you have their own people on the island talking about themselves, that they're liars, they're evil beasts, and they're slow bed. That means they would not do something for anybody unless it benefited them. They would not move. They would not lift a finger unless it was to their advantage. He says, this witness in truth, wherefore rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith, not given to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth unto the, unto the pure. All things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but listen to this. But in works, please underline that in your heart, in your Bible, if you're a highlighter. In their works, they deny him, mm -hmm. being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work, they're reprobate. Now, let me say this. Why is this important that you and I understand that grace teaches us to deny ungodliness? Because any definition of grace, let me say this, radio listeners and members of the church, that does not teach you and I to, to live better, uh, to act better, uh, to do better, is a false definition of grace. Any definition of grace that is perceived as a get-out-of-jail-free card, and you hear it all the time, that's what grace is for. Grace will cover me. And people continue to practice sin and live in sin, and they say, well, that's what grace is for. But I'm going to tell you, that's a false definition of grace if it's not teaching you and I that we need to live better and we need to do better in our life. Amen. Grace is not a get-out-of-jail-free card. God expects you and I today to live right and to live holy lives. And otherwise, if it's not taught that way, it's another gospel. In Galatians chapter 1, Paul writing to the saints in the churches in Galatia. In Galatians chapter 1, look with me in verse number 6. And it's amazing, even in the church of Christ, we got brethren who are taking God's grace in vain. Living how they want to live. Worshiping how they want to worship. You're taking God's grace in vain. 
In Galatians 1, 6, Paul says, I marvel that you are so soon removed. He's talking to Christians. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you. Now, what did he call us into? Into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, Paul says, <laughs> let him be accursed. Mm -hmm. As we said before, so I say now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that you have received, let him be accursed. For I do not persuade men, or he says, for do I now persuade men, or do I persuade God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Is that in your Bible? And so, again, I just want to stress that anyone who will tell you and I, Jesus died on the cross. You can live how you want to live. You can continue to practice sin. And it doesn't demand that you and I live faithful lives of God. It's a false definition of Christ. Now, let Amen. me say this. Yes, grace is a gift. Definitely. No doubt about it. It is a gift. But it's not a gift to be abused. When you understand God's definition of grace... It should motivate you and I to live better lives and to live lives that has a heart to, for God, to live for him, to serve him, and to be obedient to his son. You know, that's what motivated Paul to do all the work that he did. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Notice what Paul said. He, he says, I work harder than all of them. Why? Because he understood the grace that the Father had given him through his son, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 10. Listen to what Paul says here in the text. Matter of fact, let's start with verse number 8. He, Paul says, and last of all, he was seen of me. Talking about Christ also. Of one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles that am not meet to be called an apostle. Why? Because I persecuted the church of God. Paul understands his history. Paul understands his past lifestyle. But, listen at this. By the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. Listen to this. But I labored. I worked more abundantly than they all. Mm -hmm. Yet not I. Listen to this. But the grace of God which was with me. Y'all see that? Yes. And so Paul understood the proper definition of what grace is. He understood that grace taught him to deny ungodliness, mm -hmm. to work right, to live right, and also to worship right. And you see that throughout Paul's letters. Go to 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 8. Go back, go up to 2 Corinthians 9 and verse number 8. See, what you have to understand, and like the caller last week, he calls in and he doesn't understand, like many don't understand, don't understand is God's grace would give you the power to be able to live right. Right. When you love God with all your heart, Amen. all your mind, all your soul, all your strength, and you understand the grace that he has given us through his son, Jesus Christ, it's what will give you the power that you need to overcome whatever sins that may be overcoming you. Right. Now, in 2 Corinthians 9, in verse number 8, listen what Paul says here to the saints in Corinth in his second letter. He said, and you got to believe this. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Do you all understand that? And the context of this is your giving, your giving of your time, your time, your treasure, your money in particular, giving, doing the right works. What you have to understand is God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you will have enough to be able to accomplish what he wants you to accomplish. When you have the proper definition of grace being a free gift. Yes, it's a free gift, but it's also a gift that you and I have to appreciate and use to empower us to be able to do and to be all that God would have us to be. Amen. Remember in this same letter in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul prays three times for this thorn in his flesh to be removed. And what is Jesus going to tell him? We're going to see what Jesus is going to tell him. He's not going to remove it. And God may not get you out of your circumstance that you may find yourself in. But if you're a child of God and you understand God's grace, you'd understand he might not remove it in the flesh, but he will give me the grace that I need in order to endure it. Amen. Because grace gives you and I the power to overcome the world Amen. and to overcome the sins of this world. 
In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, listen what Paul says in verse number 7. Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Let me stop right there. All this foolishness that I'm hearing among saints in the world, the devil made you do it. Let me tell you something. The devil can't make you do anything. Amen. What you and I have to understand is the devil is being used by the Lord. Let me make sure you and I get this. Amen. The Lord uses Satan for his purpose. He uses Satan to purge us so that you and I can find out where we are in our relationship with God. This is even why Jesus was baptized. He was led into the wilderness to be tempted by who? The devil. The devil still has the answer to the Father. Please get that. Amen. And so what you and I have to understand is God will use Satan. But God using Satan, God has a purpose, and the devil has a purpose. God's purpose is for you and I, when he allows the devil to you, to test us to see whether or not we love God with all our heart, with all our mind, and with all our soul. But the devil's purpose, when he is being used uh, by God, is to turn your heart away from God. Do y'all get that? Amen. The devil wants you and I to turn our hearts away from God. And God, yes, he will use the devil. And that's what he's done here to Paul. He used the devil as a message to buffet him, lest I should be exalted above men, to keep him humble. For this thing, Paul says, I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. Now listen what Jesus said to him. Listen what's good. My grace is sufficient for you. Jesus says, for my strength is made perfect. Whose strength? My strength is made perfect in weakness. You see what God, Jesus told him? Now, Paul's attitude wasn't, well, I'm going to stop preaching the gospel. I'm going to stop being an apostle. I ain't, gonna, I ain't going to church worship no more. Mm. See, that's some of y'all's attitude because you don't understand grace. You really don't understand the gift. I can't overcome sin. Every man's sin. Mm. You ain't as holy as you think you are. All right. Those kind of statements coming out of people's mouth. Foolishness because you don't understand grace. That's right. So look at Paul's attitude. Most gladly, therefore... Will I rather glory in my infirmities? Why, Paul? That the power of Christ may rest upon me. Man. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses. Why? For Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Amen. See, God's grace gives us the power that we need to navigate ourselves through this life. It's God's grace, I'm gonna turn this over, that helps us. And that grace, brothers and sisters, was given by the Father through his son, Jesus Christ. He has given us the greatest gift, and that's his son. And this is why you and I gotta understand, without Jesus, Jesus says this in John 15, five, you and I can do nothing. That's right. You can do nothing without Jesus Christ. You, you need his power. We need his grace to help us in our time of need. One more scripture. Go to Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4. This is to the saints. Christians, I'm telling you, we got to wake up in the church of Christ. Some of us, man, we are so weak, sick, and sleep. Just like Paul talked about in 1 Corinthians 11. We have a bunch of weak, sleep, and sleep saints. That's what we have in the church of Christ. Sound just like the world. Acting just like the world. Mm -hmm. You know, viewing the God and the Godhead like the world. And you don't understand, when you understand, I understand grace, I got all I need to overcome. Amen. My faith overcomes the world. My faith in Christ, because he gives me the power, because he's a high priest. Amen. Hebrews 4 and verse 14. The Hebrew writer says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be uh, touch with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Now listen what he says this. Because you understand that, let us therefore come boldly unto what? Unto the throne. This is what it is. The throne of grace. Amen. That we may obtain mercy. Hear this. And find grace to help us. You see what grace does? It, it, it teaches us, I got help. I, I got the power I need to overcome in the time of need. See, the problem is, are we praying enough? 
Or do, are we, or do we have enough faith in the grace that the Father has given us in Jesus Christ? The law came by Moses, John 1, 17. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Mm. And the Father's not going to do anything else. Grace is not a license for you and I just to act how we want it and to continue in sin though it, so it can abound. That's a bunch of foolishness from the from the pits of hell and from the desk of Satan. 281-837-2222. Have a call on the line. We'll take the caller's question or comment. Go ahead, call you on the air. You know, Stevenson, I know you're jugging at me, but it's all good. But actually, Henry, I, I'm agreeing with everything you say. But let, let me say this real quick, and I want to have a decent dialogue. Okay. What is grace? Grace is unmerited favor from God. Right. It's something that God freely gives Amen. us. We don't deserve grace. Amen. None of us des deserve to go to heaven, but it's by God's grace that we all going to make it. And then you keep... We all who going to make it? We all who going to make it? You keep talking this stuff about people can live, people think they can live like they want to live just because of God's grace. Most people that I hang out with, they hard working. They go to work every day. They take care of their family. They obey the law. They don't rob. They don't steal. They don't kill. They do the right thing, but we all still sin and fall short, and that's why God's grace comes in. I think, y'all, you come across, especially as the type of guy, it's like you mad because people can live the way they want to live, and, and God's still going to save them. But like I said, most people... Out here trying, we all are trying to do our best now. I think you're just a little bit too judgmental. That, that's just my opinion. What yeah. say you? Okay, uh, I know. You see, let me ask you something. What scripture says we can live? Now, that's, I'm just quoting what you just said. We can live how we want to live and still go to heaven. What scripture says that? I didn't say that. I, I'm going to play it back because I heard you say that now. You, you said, I'm jealous. This is what you said. I'm jealous and mad because people can live how they want to live and still go to heaven. Now, if I'm wrong, I'll go back. Now, let me say this. If I'm wrong, I'll correct that. But I'm going to go back and listen to this. But I could have sworn I heard him say that. So what did you So You didn't say that. No, I said okay. that. Forgive me then. I'm wrong. I'm wrong then. Go ahead. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you're not, our thoughts and ways are not God's thoughts and ways. A man that, that knew no sin, he took on our sin, Stevenson. So let me say something. So let me ask you. Let me ask you. So if, so if you didn't say, so if you didn't say we can live how we want to live and still go to heaven, let me ask you then. Can we live how we want to live and still go to heaven? Yes. Because of God. So you did say it. Now you said it then. I just did, I missed it the first time, but when I asked you then, you, the answer is still yes. But Henry, you, you just read that God's grace is sufficient for all. Now, I might not be But I also writer. said it's I'm not a not license, Junior, for you and I to live how we want to live. I'm more, see, Junior, you have a problem with reading, my friend. That's your problem. I'm going to read Romans 6. You have a, I'm being honest with you, Junior. You have a problem with reading the Scripture. Mm -hmm. Amen. What is Paul Amen. saying? I'm going to read it. Romans 6, 1. And I don't, I don't want you to quote it and try to follow behind me. Matter of fact, can you read it? Do you have a Bible, Junior? No, no, no. Do you have a Bible? Hey, Junior, yeah. now, I'm at, now, now you say we're going to have a decent conversation. So let me ask you. I want you to read. So listen to me. Junior, I want you to read Romans 6, and I want you to read 1 through 4 for me. Go ahead. No, no, no. I want you to read. Do you have a Bible? No, do you have a Bible? Not in front of me. Well, next time you call, Junior, listen to Okay, but next time you call, please do me a favor. Have a Bible. Just please, because I'm going to have you read next time. Now listen to this. I'm, please have a Bible because next time, I'm telling you, I want you to read. Now listen to this. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should also walk in newness of life. Newness of For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. Amen. That the body of sin might be destroyed. That we, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Amen. Now, the question again is, can I live how I want to live? Because that's what you just said. Can I live like I want to live and still go to heaven? If I if, if I read that particular scripture the way you just read it to me, 
I won't live any, any kind of way I want to live, but everything. Amen. Is you see that, Junior? You see where the power is? See, that's why we're trying to get you to read. See how the, you see where the power is? Like you said, when I read what you just read, I won't live any kind of way. Amen. Yeah, but, yeah, Amen. I'm, I'm the sinner to let you go. Uh, uh, everything is about faith. You, you, you hear what it says? You just like Christ died, buried, rose again to walk in newness of life so shall we it's all by faith now me and you not actually dead physically but spiritually we dead to sin but that but, but that's why god's grace comes in when we do sin and fall short because if you just be honest stevenson you javier ozan and your bodyguard in there i'm, I'm looking at him right now the bodyguard be me mugging you guys y'all can act a certain way on this radio but like I told you last week, I'm sure it is some 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 some, some faithful people out there. But in my years of living, I ain't never met one man because we all guilty of something, and that's why God's grace come in. And I'm not trying to be no prick about nothing not say, man. But I'm just trying to get you guys to see, man. You guys got to be careful about being holier than thou. Self, right? I will never hear you laugh. I don't ne never hear you, see you smile. Can I ask you something, Junior? Real quick before I let Javier speak. Let me ask something. Can you show me a scripture in the Bible where Jesus laughed? Again, nothing wrong with laughing. I'm just trying to prove a point here. Nothing wrong with I do laugh. Uh, I do cry. Uh, I'm a human being, Junior. But let me ask something. What scripture, do you see a scripture in the Bible where Jesus laughed? I mean, I've never read it. So is Jesus not holy? But I'm sure if All Jesus right. went around doing good to folks, that, that brought a So just because you didn't see him laugh, that what does that mean? like to bring a smile to my face. I love helping people. I don't judge yeah. people. All I do is just love people, treat people the way I want to be treated, because we all uh, got issues, Brother Stevens. That's all I'm saying, brother. Well, the Bible says, if you die in your sin, where am you cannot come. That's why it's needful that we speak about these things. When it's mentioned, y'all make it hard to go to heaven. It's not us that we're teaching. Amen. We're teaching the words of the scriptures. And we align our hearts and chastise and rebuke one another, correct one another to live according to how the scriptures tell us to live. Now, when it comes to what the Bible says in Hebrews 10, 26, for if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remained no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for judgment and fearful indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. And so when it comes to G Jesus, what Jesus mentioned in John 12, 48, he mentioned the words that I've spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. We're preparing for our departure from this body, from this life. We're not here on this earth to live forever and laugh forever. Amen. We're here to learn what thus saith the Lord, as Solomon mentioned in Ecclesiastes 12, 12 and following concerning the judgment. Jesus is going to judge us on the last day. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse, verse 17, For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end of them that obey not the gospel uh, be of them that obey not the gospel? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? So judgment must begin at the house of God. Jesus said, if you die in your sins, where am you cannot come? The Hebrew writer mentions, if we sin willfully, there doesn't remain any more sacrifice uh, for our sins. So we give and read these warnings to get our hearts aligned, to agree to what this, what thus said the Lord, because grace can run out. And Amen. the Bible says in Ephesians chapter number 4, Ephesians chapter number 4, looking at verse 7, where Paul is writing to the, the saints here, he says, But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Grace is a gift, and he gives it a measurement to each one according to he what he desires to give to each individual. And so when it comes to what our brother Henry is mentioning, we're not desiring to play with his grace. We're desiring to come unto him and allow the scriptures and his voice to lead us in Galatians. Galatians chapter number 1, looking at verse number 11. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, 
but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. And what we are doing is reading the words of Christ and agreeing uh, to them, and agreeing to them. And so Paul was a sinner in his past, so was Peter, so was John, so were we. But when it comes to what God desires us to do is forgetting those things that are past and looking at, at those things that are before us. Amen. So the statement, y'all make it hard to go to heaven, us reading the Bible is not us reading ourselves and what we invented or came up with. It's the words that men wrote as they were inspired by the Holy Spirit. Amen. So really you're saying God is the one making it hard to go to heaven. He's the one making it hard. But it's not us that wrote this. We didn't write this. Holier than thou, how are you measuring holier than thou? Because there are some individuals in the Bible that are holier than other individuals. Amen. But again, God is making that judgment. God is making that measure. And guess what? God can see here on earth who is holier than some other individuals here on earth. Remember, it's the Holy Spirit that makes one holy. You cannot make yourself holy on your own. It Amen. is the Spirit of Christ that washes and cleanses. We cannot cleanse ourselves. Look at Job chapter number 1, looking at verse 1. There was a man in the land of us whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright, one that feared God and eschewed evil. God said that he was perfect and eschewed evil. Jesus said, be perfect as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Paul mentioned that to the Philippians concerning perfection. And so the Holy Spirit is perfect. We have been made unperfect by our sins. Amen. But the Holy Spirit, which is perfect, His work is to perfect. That is His job. That is His desire for us. In the book of Philippians, chapter number 1, Philippians chapter 1, looking at verse number 6, being confident of this very thing, that He which has begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is working a work in our hearts. We incline unto him, we draw near to him, that he can perfect us. Because we cannot be holy without him. We cannot be Amen. sanctified without him. Amen. Amen. He is the one that is going to guide us. The Bible says he's the author and finisher of our faith. And so if we listen to the author and he, allow, he works in us and we allow him, then we can go to heaven. But if we go against the scriptures, we make it hard on our own selves. That's to right. go to heaven. It's not us making it hard for others to go to heaven by us reading the scriptures. It's us inclining to what we read. And then as we read, we accustom our hearts to read and obey. And then we can allow our hearts to get closer to God and he'll guide us to heaven. Amen. So if you have a problem with what we're reading, if you have a problem with God, it's not us making us making it hard for you to go to heaven. It's you having a, making it hard on yourself by not agreeing to the scriptures and rejecting the truth because Amen. we're not teaching ourselves we're reading with thus said the Lord Amen. number to call is 281-7-2222 and as we close we got a minute left I want to say this uh, to Junior and all those who are listening you know God's grace and that's the Father was given to us in Christ and what this grace is radio listeners and members of the church is the Father's heart to treat us better than we deserve that's the gift that's right that the Father has treated humanity better than what we deserve. That's right. And what he has given us is grace that we need to help us to navigate ourselves through this life, Junior. Junior, you can be faithful, my friend. Amen. You, you can do it with, with God's help and God's love and God's power. You can overcome. You can be a better Junior. You can, man. You can make it to heaven. God wants you to make it. We want you to make it to heaven. But God's not going to force his will, Junior, on any of us. Right. You need to learn to read the scripture. Just like you said, man, if I'd have read it like you read it, then I, yeah, I would. I would would be hard. But that's what we encourage you. Read. Read and believe. If you're not a member of the body, cry, hear, believe, repent, confess, get baptized in water from mission sin by a male member of the Lord. You don't apologize for that. Live faithful unto death, and then and only then can heaven be your home. We need a faithful saints of God with Romans 16, 16. The churches of Christ salutes you. First John 5, and this is the thing I wanted to say. He said, whosoever believe in verse 1 that Jesus is Christ, 1 John 5 and 1, is born of God. And everyone that loveth him that begat, 
Let them also that it's begotten. If you love the Lord, you love the saints. Amen. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. I don't know why Junior's missing that and others. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. This word grievous deals with heavy and weighty. Now Junior says we're making it too hard. We're not making it too hard. Brother Fritz said Amen. God has listed this and we're repeating it. Amen. But God thinks and I will assure he's correct they're not hard Julia Amen. they're not too heavy but as brother Fritz and Henry talk you need some grace to lift it up Amen. it's like if you, you, you eat the proper vitamins the proper vitamins the proper food take the proper supplements you have big muscles and you can lift up heavy stuff and this will not be heavy anymore but you cannot be going around talking about what about the pretty young thing sometimes in control. What about the handsome young thing the women have to deal with? Everyone must make a covenant with their heart, their eyes to the Lord. Those that are single, look without sinning. Those that are married, don't look. Because that's not your business. You got yours, look at yours. He has to learn that. You got to accept it, man. man. God made us. He knows what he made us attractive. He didn't make me look at the prank of water are ugly. It's just the opposite effect. Can I say that that you actually called Julian a lie? Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he did uh, say it the first yeah, time. Yeah, he he said, hey, preacher, he said it just yeah, like he said. Thought, right? And I'm glad he repeated yeah. And Junior, you know he said it twice. And when yeah. you listen, you said you'll see he said it twice. Yeah, he said yeah but Henry, give it a bit of the doubt, show love. Yeah.